What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game and we are going to talk about what was it like, what is it like, leveling in Battle for Azeroth. Uh, this isn't the big overview, should you buy Battle for Azeroth, should you try that. That video is already live. I encourage you to go check that out. Uh, but this is about very specifically, how is the leveling, what is it like, what did I think, and uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Thank you, Patreons. If you'd like to consider becoming one, link in the description below. You guys are absolutely making all kinds of things possible, like the podcasts are now starting to get pushed out to different websites so that those can be downloaded. Things like the Google Play Store, we're working on iTunes, we're working on uh, Spotify. So thank you guys. We're working on growing the channel and you guys are making that possible. Now the first thing I want to talk about with leveling is I leveled as Horde. I leveled as Horde. I play on the server Malganus. Uh, we talk about that a fair bit on stream, but I just wanted to make that very clear in case there's anything different about your leveling experience um, when we talk about comparing and contrasting kind of, you know, different experiences different people had. Were the servers stable? Yes. I had a very smooth experience. I know some other people had some issues with disconnecting. I know some servers were worse than others. But across the board, the vast majority of people, I think things just worked out of the gate. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way that they do pre-patch, the way they roll the client out. That's where they roll the client out early. Um, and so we were all playing on the client weeks earlier. And uh, the authentication servers went down, but it was only for a couple of minutes. It really was a very short amount of time. It may have felt like forever when you bought the game and you took off work and you were ready to play, but it really was very, very quick um, that the, the authentication servers were the actual problem. And then most of it was just congestion. Uh, so some servers, people just log right in. Other servers, it was just them waiting. One of the ways they alleviated congestion is they let us log in early and we could go sit out in Silithus and the quest giver just wasn't available. And that way, all of that, all the people who did that, first of all, got in very smoothly. Second of all, it took that group of people out of the congestion line because they had already gotten past it. That was a jump cut for a sneeze. Usually I don't do that many jump cuts anymore. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Now, the next thing is I leveled with Voldoon first and I don't regret that at all. I had it recommended to me. It was one one of the best paced zones for very early on. The quests were all very close together. It was very smooth, plenty engaging, uh, set a nice pace. And so I really enjoyed it. Then we went on to Zandalar and then actually I'm doing, I'm doing that zone with a friend. So we have one chapter left. I finished everything else in the game uh, as far as quests go. Uh, I've got some war campaign stuff locked behind rep, but I'm I'm pretty caught up uh, and I'm doing Zandalar with him. And so I went up and did that one and kind of hit 120 and then I've been coming back and thanks to World Sync, I've been able to continue playing with him as he finishes leveling and we go through Zandalar together. Uh, so that's the order we did things. I went to my war campaign uh, at 118 because that was what, what was recommended to me. I would say I would do it a little bit earlier than that in hindsight because you do want to go ahead and unlock your quest table and send those guys out, guys out on their two hour quest. So I'd maybe do it at 17, get the two hour guys sent out. As soon as you can send your little guy out, your little future follower, whatever you want to call this this one from your little table on the boat, uh, I would go ahead and do that and then I would go back to questing. That way that two hour timer is kicking down if you're trying to do it all in one sitting. Otherwise, just wait till 118, do that and just log out for the night there. Um, because that two hour timer, it, it'd be nice to kind of have that. When that comes back, it opens up another quest and it just, I, that's how I would prefer to do it. So that at 120, you can jump into that war campaign in, in earnest. Now I did do a vast majority of my leveling in war mode and on my server, I had nothing but a great time. There was some occasional PVP. I did get grabbed by a couple of big groups, but I played on a PVP server before. So in trade for a 15% experience boost, my only regret is that I dropped out of war mode for the very beginning because I thought there would be people who tried to rush straight into the campaign and to come gank and actually I didn't experience that um, as soon as I went into war mode that wasn't my experience so my plan was to do that to kind of avoid those people I think in hindsight maybe I would have regretted it but given the information I had I'm glad we did it the way we did but if I could go back and tell anybody else yeah war mode sure go for it if, if you don't if you were playing on a PvP server go for it go nuts so I think that um, that's absolutely something that is worth uh, considering something worth doing um, as far as the level design, this is actually where one of my concerns comes in. As far as one of the things I wish they would do a little different, when you have only three zones, if these zones don't do it for you in their flavor, their voice acting, in the NPCs that are there, in the overall look, the music, uh, the, the monster type, the problem is you can't just avoid that zone this time because we've only got three and there's only three alliance zones and so you're gonna get stuck there. Um, so hopefully you like at least two of them. Um, but I think that that was that was plenty interesting. The the Loas and the storyline was fun. 
Uh, so without getting too spoiler free, which I'm not ever the guy that does because I don't get that into story. I thought the story was engaging. I thought the cutscenes were plenty short and plenty long at the same time for me. Uh, I don't want them to be any longer because I was there to play. I was there to get after it. Uh, so I would say that that's something that I was I was very excited about um, enjoying and, and going through the different stories. Some of the quests were fun to read. Some I uh, just skip right over them, keep moving. Uh, and so as far as a negative complaint, that's really it. I, w I would say that's my concern. Uh, the zones are very large, and obviously you're going to miss your flying mount. It'll probably be six months to a year before we get flying mounts, but you can push towards faster mount speed as soon as you have revered with everybody, I think, and um, some other stuff, finish your war campaign, and, and just knock out the normal kind of Pathfinder Part 1 achievements, and then we'll see what Pathfinder Part 2 brings a little further down the line. Uh, definitely use Goblin Gliders. Definitely get to the point that um, you're you're clearing all your quests, and uh, the world quests seem fine. The world quests seem plenty engaging. I like that they now show the reward. Uh, basically, what they now do is in, is when you finish your four world quests of whatever type, gets the emissary cachet for the day. Um, then you can it'll actually tell you what you're gonna get as the reward. That does come with AP. The AP feels good. Uh, it's neat that as your gear levels up, your AP pieces, like your chest and your shoulders and your head that have like AP stats to them. Um, it's nice that those, as those go up in higher level, they require, they're kind of powered by your necklace. So your necklace has to have a certain power level to unlock all three traits. So I would say that that's an interesting system and getting getting yourself to 305 so you can get into heroics is definitely a little bit of a grind at first. You gotta, you gotta want it, you gotta keep going. Um, so I, I really thought that that's a nice pace and I'm enjoying it so far and I have basically heroics are up and, and I think mythic zeros are either up or they're about to be up. I don't have the gear to worry about it yet, um, but it seems like we're going to be stuck there until early September and I think that's going to be a nice pace for everybody to focus on rat, focus on world quests, leveling up any alts, getting into their profession, seeing if the prices settle. So I think for the early leveling experience, I would give this an A+. Plus. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, for those of you that play Final Fantasy and come and hang out on this channel, we also play that. I think the Stormblood leveling experience was just as good as this. Uh, the server was more stable here. I know they were being DDoSed, and I don't think I mentioned that in my last video. So I know if we ever do a true versus video, I think that there's there's definitely some points on both sides to, to, that are definitely worth bringing up, at least considering. Um, but I think that as far as was it fun, did I have fun, have I gotten my values worth? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I have really enjoyed this. I've left the music on much longer than I normally do. Uh, it's been very nice. I play with my graphics way down so that I can stream and never worry about frames dropping. And I just don't ever want there to... I really try to avoid uh, frame drop and things like that. So I try very hard to lower quality and all that so that my graphics card and CPU and anything having any issue doesn't have to worry about it. I play at a lower resolution. I do all that just so that I can stream and not worry about if there's ever a moment where it needs more resources from a computer, it doesn't have them, so the stream suffers. And I think the game was still plenty beautiful. I uh, got a lot of compliments in stream on, on it being beautiful, and I encourage, if you've only seen the game visually on my stream, I encourage you to go look at screenshots and gameplay things over on uh, somebody who has a more dedicated setup, like I think IGN was showing some, or I encourage you to go to the World of Warcraft site and see some. I encourage you to go out to Twitch, introduce yourself to some streamers, and see if they're streaming at a higher quality. Uh, if you want to just see how beautiful the game can be, uh, but gameplay-wise, I have tried a little of everything, most of it on stream, and uh, I am having an absolute blast leveling, and I want to get back to it. So I went over in my last video kind of what my plan is moving forward, and I'm going to basically put out a video, stream for an hour, put out a video, stream for an hour. Uh, and that's my way of kind of pacing how much I get to play. Um, I want to just keep playing. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely solidly in the corner of still enjoying it, absolutely having a blast. If you have any questions, let me know in the description below. Uh, my concerns are pretty minor. Uh, my concerns are mostly about where it goes from here and, and how they push off of this. And those are all things that honestly until mid-September we just won't know. Uh, so enjoy it for what it is. Get in there. Enjoy fresh content. And uh, if, if I get to see you in game, that'd be great. This is Chris with Worked Game, and I'll see you next time. Do you guys remember Clyde the Couch Bear from the early videos when I was shooting in my living room and the couch was right behind me? Just wanted to do a quick update on his life. He has been way promoted. He's now guest bedroom bear. Doesn't flow as well, but uh, definitely feels like he's got his own sweet gigs now that we have two beds in our house.